Talk today. Folks, Saturday night, welcome aboard the Calamity Campaign. You're in for a real treat here as these guys uh, forge their way into history at fourth level. Uh, they've done a lot of things. They need to do a lot more, and uh, we'll get going with that in just a few minutes. Uh, we got a lot to cover because uh, they have taken a six-week hiatus here. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool crap like this phone case or this Murder Hobo Con t-shirt, uh, the link, or that shirt, or that shirt, uh, the link is down below. Go ahead and check in. It out uh, should still on sale. So, you know, uh, get it before it goes back to regular price. Don't worry, it'll be on sale again at some point in time. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, first off, Pirate Dog Dice for dice that really wreaked havoc the other day. Gotta say, I uh, loved rolling them dice because it was brutal. Uh, and so if you're looking for custom dice, check out at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, if the game stinks, unlike this one, this one smells like awesomeness. Uh, but awesomeness doesn't come in a set at uh, Odd Fish Games slash Adventure Sense. However, they do have a plethora. That means a lot uh, for some of you uh, of some different <laughs> sense. Uh, they also make something to help you write much more gooder than me. Uh, check it out. Uh, and soon... Uh, they're going to be kickstarting their how to RPG with their cats. Uh, I've played it. I had a good time. I think you will too. As soon as we know when they kickstart it, uh, we will let you know. Last but certainly not least, one of our convention sponsors, Mattis Productions. If you're in the market for a battle mat or some other cool t-shirts or some other neat uh, trinkets, uh, especially their little uh, design uh, creature. I love that. Check out Maddox Productions. Uh, it's uh, it's on Twitter. I can't remember what it is because it's not Maddox Productions. I think it's like Prod Maddox. Maddox Prod. You know what? We'll figure I'll, it out. You'll I'll, like I'll it. retweet. You'll, you'll find them that way. Easy peasy. And don't forget, of course, Murder Hobo Con a week from tomorrow. One week. That's it. Uh, event submissions have closed. We've got, I think, 18 events themselves. We've got two bands. We've got a comedian. We've got a fortune telling booth. Uh, we got sights and sounds that will amaze and astound you. Uh, MurderHoboCon.com is five bucks to get in and then play as many games as you want. We would like it if you signed up for the games. That way the DMs know if you're going to play. Some games are full, some games are not. Uh, check them out. There's brief descriptions over at tabletop.events. Uh, MurderHoboCon.com. It's, it's blinking somewhere on this damn screen. Anyway, we've got a lot to get to, so let's get going. Uh, we won't steal Willy Wonka's line. Rob, you're up first. Who are you? Who do you play? Uh, hi, I'm Rob. Um, I'm at Cthulhu Rob on Twitter, and I play Dave, the barbarian with very little brain. But a whole lot of brawn and a whole lot of love. A lot of love. Well, speaking, of, speaking of a lot of love, uh, Scott, you're up next. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, but that's great. I, I'm Scott. Uh, I play Rakir, uh, a very popular monk. Everyone loves him. He is the popular Everyone wants to be just like him. Um, everyone likes hanging around him, uh, and he knows it. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I'm glad I've got adventure sense because uh, yeah. start to... <laughs> <laughs> something's starting to waft in here. Uh, might have to check the sewer line. Uh, <laughs> very good. David, you are up next. Hey, I'm... Dave, the other Dave. <laughs> I, w I play Ingve in this campaign, the Calamity campaign. I also play Crow in Calamity B campaign. So, <coughs> yeah, the guys from, from yeah, Toad Town, that's us. So, <laughs> uh, I'm also on the Cacophony show and uh, usually on Between the Rolls. I also sometimes get a one shot. So, uh, anyway, you can follow me on D and Devious on Twitter. Sometimes I say witty stuff. It's mostly just reposting stuff, or I must have missed those. Or promoting <laughs> stuff. So yeah, you did womp, miss them. Womp, womp, you womp. missed it, man. You missed it. it so uh, witty. You just don't know. 
<laughs> Last but certainly not least is Jesse. Jesse, uh, tell, us you. tell us. Oh, I'm beating you to it. I'm sorry. I'm too fast here. That, that's okay. We're, we're on a short time frame. Uh, hi, I'm Jesse. You can find me on the uh, social media pages at JR Wooey. Um, I play the lead and ranger, Azari, who just got a sister back alive. And so far, sh- yeah, up yours. <laughs> <laughs> She's whole. Some light. <laughs> okay. She's alive, that I know of. Yeah. She is alive. Uh, very good, folks. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, so I'll get you uh, caught up. These guys uh, come from the Stone Age, Bronze Age town of Ba. Most of them are illiterate. Azari is not, uh, because Azari is Leonid and not from Ba originally. Uh, Dave is not from Ba originally, but he comes from a horse trader group. So. Uh, and, and, and as he's already pointed out, he's not very smart as a barbarian. Uh, these guys, uh, their homeland got attacked. Uh, several of their friends, neighbors, and loved ones uh, were absconded with by uh, individuals known as the Grubex, uh, essentially slavers. Uh, is, some lived, uh, some died, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last time these guys made it to a small island in between uh, a raging river that uh, they did not ford very well, although they succeeded, uh, their new friend from a different tribe called Peck Peck <laughs> really got an ass beating. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they've arrived. They arrived on the island. Uh, they found everybody in a zombie-like trance, including a few Grubeck captors. Uh, they found, unbeknownst to them, is a library because none of them have ever seen such a thing. Uh, there was a giant globe in there presenting uh, everything <laughs> about the world. They used that as kindling, which was perfect. Uh, Azari's sister was possessed uh, as part of the banshee ghost poltergeist uh, dilemma they did manage to free her and believe to have destroyed whatever unholy spirit had her uh azari has explained what is going on to her they've also found a handful of books uh one is a religious book that they don't know about one talks about a great calamity one talks about plant-based uh things botany and the last one is an anatomy book and rakir uh who has a dark sense about him of late uh has gotten (laughs) that one we rejoin these guys as azari hands out the books uh but here's a slumping body hit the floor althea your sister uh is crumpled up in a heap next to uh, the Sol Grubeck prisoner with the severely fractured leg. Dave, you will notice Althea kiss the floor first because you are not getting any books. Uh, what would you like to do with this Leonid princess? Hey, you all good, right? Good, good start. You do real yeah, well in hey. taverns. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do? Uh. Dave will lean down and like shake her. Hey, you all right? Uh, Azari, your sister's jiggling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk over to my sister, Alita. Are you all right? Uh, Rakir, Ingve, <laughs> Azari, and Dave, you all surround the slumped over woman. Uh, her eyes stare blankly. However, they are her eyes. They are not opaque and covered over as they were when she was possessed. However, she seems to be almost, uh, unbeknownst to you, comatose, uh, but is not answering. Azari uh, or Rakir, I assume one of you will check her pulse as Dave shakes her violently. She does have a pulse. She seems to be breathing on her own. Uh, the eyes have the thousand yard stare. She is just not cognizant at this point in time. Uh, also at this moment, the Grubeck prisoner moans loudly uh, as the pain in his leg uh, has overcome his uh, concussion given out by one of Peck Peck's people. What would you guys like to do at this point in time? Kick him in the leg. Uh, 
Ingbe brings up the fact quietly away from the prisoner is like he is going to hinder us trying to get out of here. So maybe I should set his leg and heal it. I mean, come on, we are better than them, if, you know, by showing some mercy. Rakir seems to disagree. I'm with you halfway on that. <laughs> okay. Mercy is a quick. Uh, on, on the first part, you're right. He's going to hinder us. But we have this new book. And I want to try my best to learn something from these pictures. Because I don't know if I believe all this. It has what, what, what your legs look like and what this looks like. Let me try to do it. You want to and try to fix it? <laughs> I want to try to fix it using this book. Hey, if I if I succeed, great. I succeed. If I don't, eh. Let me ask you this: Are you literally going to use the book? What? Yes, I'm what? really. Gonna, no, no, not. I'm going to read. I can <laughs> see there are pictures here. There are pictures of his leg. There are pictures. I, I I don't understand the words to the side of them, but I understand the pictures. Right. If, if, if it's supposed to be straight and it's not straight, maybe I can make it straight. Well, it's very obvious that it is not straight as it is jutting at a 90 degree angle. So, Azar, you now are ignoring Althea as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just I just point that out while I'm still staring, like trying to wake my sister to see what's going on with her. But I point that out because I watched Dave's uh, handiwork earlier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, Azari, you will not be able to shake her out of her comatose state, uh, but she is breathing. Okay. Ha heart rate and respiration are fine, uh, but she just won't snap out of it. Dave will uh, build a stretcher. Well, now, Dave, are you going to help Rakir and Ingve do Frankenstein, or are you going to build the stretcher? I'll build a stretcher. Okay. I'll, I'll help Dave build a stretcher. <laughs> okay, Rakir, your moment to shine is here. You, uh... I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, page what? 87 is the leg setting page. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I'm I'm going to you know try my best. But I also know that that is that it's gonna he's gonna scream really loud. So I'm going to you know put um, I'm gonna have to cut part of his clothes off and you know like make like a little rag and give him a, something to bite down on, okay? And put that in his mouth and and you know and then you know plug his nose so he doesn't you know scream or anything like that. And then I try to say. <laughs> So here you get okay. <laughs> I, I I've got a visual. I think everybody here's got a visual of that one. Uh, this this cannot possibly go. I'm, I'm just thinking of Ving Rhames and Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, this, this cannot possibly go wrong. Uh, okay, He's Zed. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to attracting attention. I am going, well, you know, everybody's milling about now that their spell is broken. And of course, Peck Peck left your guys' shit hanging in the wind, but he is now yeah. back. Uh, do you want Peck Peck to clear the room or do you give two craps about it, Rockier? Uh, I don't, I don't really care. I'm very interested in what's going on with this body right now. This is my time oh. to really learn about that, you know, all what I'm about right now. This is, I, I really have to learn this. <laughs> okay, so figure 87B clearly shows that the leg must be straightened out first, uh, oh. followed by some type of uh, pressure items on the side. I will give you a straight up medicine check. Uh, because you have no medicine background, it should be a disadvantage. However, because you have the book, I'm going to make it a straight roll if that's fair to you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> he rolled a one. You successfully tear the clothing off. You stuff it into his mouth. 
Uh, the worried look on his eyes tells you everything you need to know. And you lean down and say, you might feel some pressure. As you yank, you hear a snap and a crack. He spits out the bloodied uh, clothing strip that he had in his mouth and immediately goes unconscious. You notice a puddle of blood begins to grow underneath the leg. <laughs> oh, no. Referring back to 87B image, uh, you think that... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what the problem was. <laughs> uh, okay. So, okay. <clears throat> I can stop this. <laughs> no, we, we, we need to let nature take its course. And, I'm uh, talking about we, we produce really flame, flame man. Cauterize that shit. I'm not talking about your wounds. <laughs> we, 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 uh, we have to learn from our mistakes. But, you know. As you two continue to argue, the blood pool grows. <laughs> he, he is completely unconscious. The we pain has rushed over. This. I can fix That's this. I can fix it. Give me another chance. Give me another chance. I can fix it. Really, I can't. Got to tourniquet that leg. <laughs> what would you like to do? I'm, I'm going to try to apply lots of pressure to that blood because I know the bleeding isn't good. Bleeding can't be good. Correct. So I'm going to, to just try to wrap, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to look at the book to see where the blood is coming from. Okay. I'm going to try to figure out where the blood is coming from. And I'm going to try to stop the blood from doing that. that, that that's all I'm going to think. Try to stop the blood. Uh, D12 against me. And get a find some scorpions oh to use his hemostats. <laughs> that's a nine. That's a nine. <clears throat> on what you don't know, but on page 80, start of chapter six, uh, you notice uh, a ventricular, or not, it's not ventricular, uh, the blood vessel layout. And it appears as though you may have crushed uh, what should be something, uh, the diameter of your finger. Ah, uh, well, there's right. your problem. <laughs> I try my best, Ingvay, and if, if you have if, if you have a better idea, I'm all ears. I'm not I'm not trying to hurt this person. Ingvay, no. <laughs> no they like the surgeon. I, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Puts them down. <laughs> Channels the raven and cast cure wounds uh, on on that. And the blood stops. Uh, the angle of the dangle is dangle. severe. <laughs> Unless he's a stork, he ain't gonna be walking on that for quite some time. Yeah. You see, now we can try it again. <laughs> He heals that, that is seven. a good point. Uh, the, the man he heals is, for seven. So. Okay. Uh, the eyes flutter on the Grubeck. Oh my god. Oh my god. What happened? Oh my beard. <laughs> so, so, so the bleeding has stopped and the wounds have begun, begun to close. <laughs> Well, the, the arterial... Uh, the arterial bleeding. Yeah, the arterial yeah, bleeding is fixed. The leg is still fucked. Yeah. He's, gonna, he's, he's still messing with it like it's a tinker toy. He's going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be coming next. That's your next chance, Rakir. Rakir, I'll give you a second chance if you want to try it. No, I, I, after a while, we start crossing the line. And there are more important things going on right yeah, now. Yeah, we can't I, go into torture. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, I was really hoping that I'd learn something from this book, but obviously, I have a lot more to learn. And for that, I'm just going to stand back, and I'm going to let Aziri take care of his sister. Biology uh, is hard. <laughs> Azari and Dave, you successfully make one stretcher. Uh, you notice that Rock here in Ingve. Uh, we don't know what these fuckers are yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, the guy's still, he's still alive, though, right? He's still alive. Oh, okay. uh, he's in a substantial amount of pain. He is also going to need a stretcher as well. Mm, that's now the we problem. Kill him. Right. Sorry, buddy. 
Now, uh, also, it is late in the day, uh, so I, I don't well, know. We're if you probably going to have to shelter for tonight <clears throat> or something. Uh, the library itself is vast. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. The library it's itself is on fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, it's on fire right now. Yeah. Uh, there are several other buildings present. Uh, strange structures with smooth walls and uh, opaque squares windows uh, in them. Uh, so there are several other buildings present. Everybody that you talk to, your kinsman, Peck Peck's kinsman, not the Grubeck guard because he's not talking, uh, will tell you that they arrived on the island with Grubeck guards a considerable amount more than what currently exists. They also look around and notice that several of their comrades are, are missing. They don't, they don't know. They, they can tell you that there were about five or six more people, uh, mm -hmm. not including Grubeck, and they are gone. Uh, once they got to the plateau, uh, everything started to get a little bit fuzzy. Uh, now down below, remember, uh, after you guys went over the falls in Niagara, uh, Rakir did fix uh, two half boats into one functioning boat. Mm -hmm. So you still have that option, uh, but for the immediate future, uh, you're going to need to find successful shelter uh, and something to eat. If you can find something. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we should be able to do this. Do. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, Who wants to do what? You've got a shelter problem and a food and water problem. Ingve, uh, Rakir, find shelter. Um, Dave and I will work with Peck Peck's tribe to gather food and okay. water. That works. Okay. We want a shelter oh, here. Oh, good. Is that correct? Dave, take Peck Peck. You want us to, again. you want us to I'll check. I'll take Peck Peck Dave. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> you want us to check the smaller yes. structures? Check okay. the smaller structures for safety. Uh, larger numbers in each structure. Uh, just so it is, they are just comfortable, not enough to spread us too thin. Understood. Uh, we'll start with Rakir and Ingve. There are three buildings here. Uh, they are essentially made of cinder block, but you don't know what that is. They are smooth sided. Uh, they are also covered over in ivy, uh, a lot of ivy. S there are some plants that are blooming within the ivy small white trumpets uh, with blue centers. Uh, strange, you don't know what they are. You've never seen them. Uh, Ingve, if you take enough time, you can look through your botany book to see if you see them. But there are three structures. All three are much smaller than the library itself. Okay. Um, so one, two, or three. No. Look here, build in one. Building one, and I'm going to take some of those little, little flower-looking things. Okay. <laughs> How do you take them? Carefully. First, <laughs> I cook them up and put them in a spoon. Okay. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to eat them. I'll just hold them in my mouth until they're soft. Uh, it directly into my veins. As, as you guys and a few of your comrades from Ba look around, uh, building number one is rectangular. Uh, and it has a lot of those window thingies there. Uh, mm -hmm. On the far end is a rusted metal door. Uh, and it does not appear to have a latch on it. Okay. Not a latch, but a handle, something to pull, or will it need to be pried and pulled open? It looks like there's nothing there, so you're probably going to have to pry it open. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm not using my scimitar for that. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, 
Yeah. So there's there's no other point of entry other than a window or. Do you want to go all the way around? Yeah, I'll, I'll investigate. At the far end, uh, there appears to be a a latch outcropping, also rusted steel door. Okay. The windows are too high to see in, unless you guys want to stand on each other's shoulders. Okay. And put your hands directly into the vines, which oh, is fine. Do that. That is just fine. <laughs> with your tongue, steady yourself with your tongue. <laughs> Uh, when you get to this door with the latch, it is locked. Snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> um, uh, Rick here, do you want to take a look in the window or? Um, yeah. <clears throat> or if you want, I'll I'll lean myself up against the uh, uh, you know vines and let you crawl on my back. That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yes. Uh, give me an acrobatics check, Ingve. Okay. All right. Uh, acrobatics, <clears throat> uh, 20, not natural. 17 plus 3. <clears throat> you can climb right up over his back, reach up, and you can just barely see over the sill uh, that has a lot of bird poop on it uh, mm -hmm. and some nesting areas. Uh, and there are, there's, there's like two rows of s metal square things in there. Two rows of metal square things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I know what shelving is? <laughs> uh, you would probably or a have, case. uh, you would probably have that. That ain't it. Okay. Uh, Azari, Dave, uh, do you want to go to the far end of the island? Since, I mean, you, you are at the tip, essentially. You can go inland. Again, uh, a lot of flora, a lot of, or a lot of flora in here. You haven't seen much in the way of fauna at this time. Okay, yeah, we'll head to the other end, just to say. And you are taking Peck Peck's people with you as well? Um, just... <laughs> Actually, I'll ask Peck Peck before we get into it. Peck Peck, we are going to go hunt for some food. Uh, maybe see if there's a better water situation. Uh, would you have anyone you care to join us? You'll be working with myself. Just you? Yes. Dave okay, Mike. yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I will one. go. Because I don't want him setting my leg every break. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was the other one. Uh, he will not be setting your leg. Um, no, he's going to be responsible for breaking it. <laughs> I saw him kick that guy in the knee. I surely don't want the other guy trying to set it. Ah, uh, yes, he was deserving. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Dave, so, you notice that Peck Peck gives you the stink eye a lot because <laughs> you've nearly killed him twice now. That's, that's pretty good. Charm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're bound to finish the job eventually. Uh, all right, so let's go. One of these times, I'll try it. <laughs> uh, Dave Azari and Peck Peck, straight up D20 roll. 15. Seven. Three. I hear something moving in the bushes. Uh, he suggests you guys split up because splitting the party is always a good thing. Uh, he will offer to take center if you guys want to take the flanks, or uh, he is flexible on that. I'll we'll we'll take flanks. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, as he creeps up uh, behind some willowy, uh, dipping branch kind of tree, you two also hear a gobble 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 gobble. Uh, and Peck Peck just freezes because he doesn't want to scare it. Uh, Dave, Azari, what would you guys like to do? Uh, I'm going to see if I can discern if it's the... Does it sound like the the turkey creatures we went to capture originally in our first, our very first hunt? A little bit. So if I remember right, these things are pack animals. So there's multiple usually. I'll try and look for the other see if i can see any of the other 
animal, any more of them other than just the one that was making noise. Investigation roll. Okay. Dave, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to charge look forward, toward, throw peck look, peck at it. Look, <laughs> look toward the sound where the sound came from and see if I can see any indication whatsoever of a body mass. Investigation. Uh, 16. Azari, it seems to be a solo creature. Okay. Investigation, that's 19 minus 2 is 17. Dave, it doesn't appear as though what you guys initially contacted before. Uh, you notice that this thing has a like a wad of feathers uh, that kind of swoops along, similar to what a reptile might look like. Mm. Uh, the gobble gobble noise stops and peck peck slowly moves towards it. Would you guys like to continue as well? Um. I do have this javelin and I'm really tempted <laughs> to shoot back back. <laughs> but that worked last time. I mean, it's 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 how Dave rolls. Um, if I can see it, I'll take the shot. You can see parts of it. Yeah. Uh, I will. Like uh, half cover or? Uh, you see about, well, let's see what uh, percentage you see. Ooh, uh, ten percent. Oh, that's not enough to throw. Okay. okay, I'll try and I'll try and quietly move to a better position. I'll, I'll continue knock to. Oh, good. Continue to move out around it to try and get between Peck Peck and get it between where Peck Peck is and where I am sure. by going around. Does Peck Peck, based on his movements, look like he's going to try and flush it in a certain direction, or does he look like he's going to? He's going for like the quiet insta kill uh he looks like he's creeping up on it uh for evaluation and potential kill strike okay uh then i'm going to um i'm just gonna knock an arrow and i'm just gonna pull back and prep for peck peck to make his move i'll go after peck peck one two dave three four azari five six peck peck uh, the creature emerges with a murder hobo ink uh, and charges towards Peck Peck. As it does so, uh, it flips up a great deal of feathers uh, with many eyes glistening at you. Everybody roll initiative. <laughs> uh, that's 20. <laughs> I, I tie with your, but not naturally. I take Dirty it me and Rick. <clears throat> Are me and Rakir in this too? Or no, no, sorry. We're, we're not no, in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, 12. Uh, you and Peck Peck have 12s. Dave has an unnatural 20. I got a natural 20. I'm going to charge Peck Peck and try and Peck Peck. You know, oh. I always picture Peck Peck as Joe Dirt or Kid Rock or something. <laughs> so like do I. Just a mullet, uh, a loincloth, and, and like a really... And filth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> as the feathers rise up and <clears throat> shake at him, uh, he just stops dead in his tracks and takes a beak shot right into his breastbone. <laughs> oh, by an angry oh, creature poor, about poor four back. feet tall and about a foot and a half wide. So it, it's clearly manageable and it'll feed a lot of people. Uh, Dave, uh, the creature sprung forth and attacked Peck Peck. What do you want to do? I, I have this javelin. Bye, Peck Peck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 19. Okay. Oh, yeah. You, you spear it right in its gullet. We know how that rolled for our last episode. Uh, <laughs> that that will be uh, plus. Who the hell's the javelin at? Jesus, uh, that's one d six plus four. So that's uh, that's eight points of piercing damage. Jesus, take the javelin, uh, Azari. I'll let you go first, as Peck Peck is in shock after being beat. All right. Wrong screen. Uh, that's a 15. That hits. Okay. And it's 1d8. Oh, come on. Stay on. Uh, that is a 7 points of piercing damage. Creature falls dead in a heap as Peck Peck staggers back, holding his chest like Jack Ruby just got him. <laughs> For those of you who don't know that, uh, you have to check with me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Peck Peck staggers back, uh, appears okay, and then gets angry, but the creature's already in a heap. 
Peck Peck. Did you see the eyes on that thing? Yes. I was I was hypnotized. <laughs> Whatever that word means. <laughs> and he was blinded by the light. Any guesses what you uh, massive heroes just killed? Oh, no. Uh, you want to tell us? I don't know. Does it have a bunch of babies nearby to make us feel terrible has, about it? It has no. multiple eyes. That's what it looks like. Multiple eyes, feathers. Sounds like a peacock to me. It's a peacock. Yeah. <laughs> you just killed NBC. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a giant, one might say dire peacock. Uh, it's going to be a it, dinner peacock. It, it's yeah. going to feed quite a few. But the uh, as you guys look at the feathers, you notice that they are not eyes. Uh, it is just the coloration of the feathers. And they are quite cool looking. Definitely going to add some of those to Dave's collection. Uh, as as you guys, do you guys try and find more creatures to eat, or do you think this is going to be enough? I mean, it's it's only it's one. Gonna, that's yes. only one. Yeah, that's not enough. It would be best if we could find maybe two more. Fair enough. Rock here. Maybe, maybe Peck Peck should take that back to camp. He can do that. Uh, he's just glad he didn't get get patched up. Sure. Uh, Rock here and Ingve, uh, you guys are moping around building one. Uh, right. On the first assessment, the only thing we couldn't see anything else in that room. Just very dark. Okay. In the dying of the light. All right. In the dying of the light. Uh, so, Rain. yeah, well, we should Rain. try to just uh, get entry into the place. So, you said there was a latch. On this side? Mm -hmm. There's a door handle. Okay. But it is locked. It is locked. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a problem. Okay. Can we see any... It, was there a door handle on both sides, on, on both ends, or just one? Just the one end. The other end was just a flat door. Flat door of, with no obvious way of opening it, correct? Correct. All right, I'm going to use my pen knife because I do have a small pen knife and try to outline the outside of the flat door with no obvious entrance to see if I can find out anything, any any hinge, anything to get something, maybe with a little bit more leverage, maybe a sword or something, an axe, something uh, okay. to maybe pry it open. So I'm going to work around the edges. <sighs> so I have flat door. Ingve on one end. Rock here on the other, correct? So yeah, why not? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So rock here. Uh, you take your pen knife uh, about three and a half feet up on the right side. There's, there's like a like a latch or something holding it shut right there. Okay. And it's you can hear that ting 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 ting. So it's metal. I'm gonna keep working my way around to see if I can find anything else or if that's the only thing there is uh probably that's all there is okay then i'm going to start working the heck out of it with my pen knife to try to pry it open or click it or move it or something or gonna, you know just, yeah, just yeah, sure. try it you know just best i can just like a shake weight ting, ting, yeah. ting, ting. uh ingve you're at the other end of the building there's a latch but it seems to be locked all right uh, some kind of circular device Above the latch. Never seen something like this before. Kind of weird. Circular device. Okay. Is it like a knob? And does it look like it can move like to the left or the right? It's like those coins that Rakir keeps. Uh, uh -huh. Same depth and texture, but there's a there's a slender hole in it. Oh, okay. I it's gotcha. a deadbolt lock. Yeah. Yeah. But you okay. guys don't know that. We don't know that. Uh, Ingbe says, well... You know, there are two other buildings to check, so we could check to see if we can get ink. Hey, okay, there's two other those. buildings. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, guys, you guys are at opposite ends now. Have to yeah. finish with this. Have to finish with this. <laughs> you go ahead and finish it off. <laughs> He's, yeah, you know, nope. It might last four hours, but it's not uh, working. <laughs> it's not working. So, see, Alice, I told you. I mean, 
Uh, Ingve come uh, walks over and says, "Look, let's just try another building. We'll we'll see. Obviously, right. this one we right. can't get into. So, all right." Uh, there is another building. It's smaller. Uh, they kind of sit at a diagonal line. So this one is a long rectangular building. Uh, the next one is a short squarish building, also yep. covered in ivy. Okay. Uh, we'll check building number two then. It has a, again, metal door rusted. Uh, it has a lever uh, that is highly rusted on the sole door, no windows. Invincible location. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to go up and try to gently move the lever. Gently? Not, not, not even remotely. All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to put my back into it this time a little bit and to see if I can't move it a little bit. I, I mean, not that strong, but, but, but I'll, but I'll try. Trying to wiggle it just a little bit. Give me a strength check there, WD. All right. Better roll a 40. (laughs) That'll be a uh, 14. 30, 14. Uh, 14 is exactly what you need. A loud screech is heard throughout the island. Azari and Dave, you're like, is that uh the rust kind of crumbles off uh, and it finishes off uh with a big stroke uh and you hear yeah you hear and see the door move slightly uh the band of rust around uh dirt that has been encrusted into the door frame uh falls out i i if if there's some space there does it pull towards me or push in comes towards you okay so i will i will open the door a uh, very significant smell of moisture assaults your noses uh you can get mold moisture uh and give me you two give me perception checks uh sure Ooh, natural 20 so for That's, uh, perception, perception 26. Dirty 19. Both of you hear uh, drip, 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 drip. Uh, clearly water is falling from somewhere. As you glance in, uh, the room is dark. Uh, the floor is something that you have never seen before. It's like uh, sword blades. Uh stacked, uh, very thin, uh, rectangular bars of metal uh, that turn into stairs that go down. So this room is effectively 10 by 10. There is a small landing and then these metal grates. uh, (laughs) I was about to say sword. Yeah, so it's some kind of entrance. Uh, You can smell the water. Uh, okay. Does it smell putrid or does it just smell stale? Stale. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Ingbe's gonna reach in his his uh, pack, his satchel, and pull out a torch and produce flame and light the end of the torch. And the interior walls are similar to the exterior walls sans the vines. Uh, it's very musty, very humidish in here. The dripping continues. Uh, look around, uh, provides you no answers with it. You do notice that the metal great stairs go down, 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 down into the darkness. So at least 40 feet down. Um, I tell Rick here it's just like it, it appears there's there's something else down another chamber room perhaps I'll, I'll um, yell down and see if I hear an echo you do okay. that every every evil creature in existence charges knows where now <laughs> so yeah there, there is oh. an echo we just found the pit of hell, the abyss. <laughs> I think uh, I found a use for the Grubeck. Somebody so, ring the dinner bell. 
you know, I can summon a little friend to go take a look. <laughs> I mean, or we could just take the Grubek and have him go down there and see if anything attacks him. Or gets away. Or gets away. Yeah, that's the risk. I I say or, or yes, he, he he could get away. It's a fair chance. It's fair. It's 50-50. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you why. I, I said, let me go ahead and we try this. If we see anything else, we'll send the group back in. So so essentially, uh, Ingbe is going to uh, summon a companion uh, in the form of a, 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 a tunnel rat, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, he's talks to it in beach spe uh, beast speech and yeah, sends it in and, uh, you know, kind of bows his head and then kind of the eyes roll roll a little bit, and he can see through the rat's eyes. So. Now, this is a standard size tunnel rat, correct? Right. All right. Okay. It's going to take a while because it has to hop down each step. Uh, okay. As it does, you see the same exact thing. You see the woven kind of great system. Uh, it is rusty, uh, but it is solid. Uh, at least for the tunnel rat and you guys on the platform. Outside, Azari and Dave, you guys stand alone as you try and figure out what else to look for. You can go to the left side of the island, stay in the center, or go to the right. Center. Okay. Uh, you find what appears to be one of them buffalo creatures but it's different because the horns are straight uh, and it and an associate are feeding on tall grasses and just kind of we discovered the we discovered the longhorn state <laughs> uh, and there's one for each of you but they kind of look at you with General Malays, uh, give me insight checks, both of you, please. Let's see, I rolled an 18 insight wisdom, 19. Uh, it's a 19, 24. Them horns are going to hurt if they connect. Hmm. You guys are. Uh, 15 feet away. Well. And let's go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah. Because <laughs> 20, dirty. 16. Tied with the creatures. Dirty 20. Uh, Dave, um, um, what do you want to do with these two things? I'm, I'm Dave, so... Um, that javelin and then charge bonus action to rage on the way. Um, hurl the javelin 40, uh, 14 plus six, 20, uh, five plus four, nine points of piercing. Okay. Uh, and going into a rage, I pull out my great axe and charge toward the critter. Uh, Azari, it seems as though the decision's been made. What would you like to do? I will uh, fire on the creature. Uh, same one or different one? Uh, I'll go after the other one since okay. Dave's on the first one. Okay, that's uh, uh, first attack is a 23 to hit. Yep. Okay, where are you? There we go. Uh, first attack is do, 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 do nine points of piercing damage, okay. and then I can make a second attack on my first turn. Oops. That is a 25 to hit, so this one does an extra d8 of damage on my first turn. Uh, eight plus four, another 12 points of piercing damage. 
Okay. Odd, it goes after, or one through four, it goes after you. Five or six, it goes after Dave. It's going to go after you at the same time. Uh, uh, five, so that's not going to make it. Uh, Dave. Oh, nat 20. Uh, it took great <laughs> offense at your attack. Uh, Azari, yours takes two steps forward and keels over. Uh, Dave, uh, it spears you with one of its longhorns. Yep. Mm, steakhouse. For eight plus two, ten damage as it Take gores five. you. Uh, new round, Dave. Uh, you are locked in mortal combat with this large bovine. Squished! <laughs> uh, 14 plus 6 is going to be 20. Hits. And uh, that's going to be 9 plus... Do, 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 do. What is it? 4? 9 plus 4 is uh, 13 plus 2 radiant damage. Uh, you've killed 15. it. You guys have killed a peacock and two cows. Bravo, heroes. <laughs> well, it takes a lot of work to uh, battle cows and peacocks. Uh, you will notice that these two creatures uh, are more than enough uh, yeah. for food. They're uh, fucking heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, if there was only other people to help carry that. <laughs> well, uh, we can use our, we can use the landscape and or use our rope. Um, maybe we can drag them by the horns. Da, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> I think butchering them on the spot would be the thing to do. Yeah, that that'll be good for their open wounds. Just drag in the, yeah. the bites and the ticks and shit. Sure. Uh, We'll, Peck, yeah. Peck, Peck, Peck will be back in a couple minutes, but sure, you guys can yeah. start dragging them. Uh, yeah. Rakir and Inve, the uh, tunnel rat, has gone down about 40 feet, uh, and you know, seeing through its eyes, you notice that water is coming up through the grate. Uh, it might be a landing. You aren't sure. You can't really tell. It's dark and murky. Okay. Uh, the dark vision does uh, for the rat sixty feet can't really can't really discern much. Everything uh, is the same down here. Okay, all right. The temp their temperature is constant, so you, you can't tell. Uh, I looked down. <coughs> does it seem like the water is rising, or does it like ebb and flow, or something like that, or does it have intelligence? Uh, well, I'm connected to it, so. Uh, I'm, it's a vessel. Uh, or you cannot tell. Okay. All right. All right. Um, looking at, I'll, I'll, I'll pan out and all that. Do I just see more darkness or do I just see more darkness and water? Like just. Uh, you, you cannot see any distinction here without light whatsoever. The dark vision is not going to give you any advantage. You are. Okay. In pitch black, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I disconnect and call my little friend back. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I, I tell Rakir what I've seen. I said, uh, apparently, stairs leading down, water coming through weird surface, metal surface at the bottom. So I, I have a question about how the stairs go down. Is it a spiral? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, just a, it's a square. It, how much of a center opening is there? If you were to like drop a rock or something like that? About four feet. Four feet? Okay. A great idea. Uh, yeah. might... Jump! We'll see. <laughs> Jump! No, I... I, I... <clears throat> Now, Yingve, you're probably not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a good use for our wounded Grubeck. He, we could have him walk down the stairs best he can. And with, with, the, with the light. And if he can't, you know, then he'll fall, but he'll fall and he'll attract attention. 
Now, these guys hurt our people. These guys broke into our, our, our home. They kidnapped our, our women and children. They get whatever they got coming to them. If he's, understand, he this could. Task, if he's able to complete this task, he can earn his freedom and you can heal him all the way up. Or but he he's got to just do earned, something for us. He may just earn his freedom by just going down there and be like, bye, suckers. And yeah, he might. Okay. That's actually what I'm saying. That's that. That's the risk we take. Okay. How about if we tether him? We'll tell him it's for his safety. Okay. Fair enough. Fair okay. enough. We can tether him. That that that's a, that that's a fair compromise. We're okay. using him as bait. We understand that to attract any baddies that are there. <laughs> he has a chance to either earn his freedom by escaping, or earn his freedom by earning our trust. Right. Right. Okay. Is that <laughs> fair? Sounds. Sounds fair. Okay, so I'll I'll go and I'll I'll see if I can't grab the Grubeck and you know drag him over and explain to him the situation. Persuasion okay. check. Okay, persuasion check. I get that. Talk about needing to roll a four. Seventeen. <laughs> so you don't know what's at the bottom. Nope. And you'll pull me up if something goes bad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We promise. It sounds like you're going to use me as bait. Do I get a weapon? You get a torch. I give him my pen knife. <laughs> oh, good. I can play mumbly peg. <clears throat> okay. No, if, if, if we 40 feet, I can move 40 feet in one round. And, and I can't. I'm a monk. Yeah. I can move pretty damn fast. If you're hurt, then I got to get down there because whatever you get is going to come back with us. But hey, this is your penance. You broke into our homes and stole our kids. You want to earn your freedom? This is the way. <laughs> I say, <coughs> you won't. I tell him you won't be alone. And uh, if he's got like a fold in his clothing or something like that, I'll put my little rat with him. That'll freak him out. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're going to have to help him because the leg is severely damaged. Okay, it's still. Okay. Uh, once inside, uh, you're using a rope to lash him, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. He, uh, there's like a handrail there, and he will use the handrail and kind of hop down one leg at a time. Uh, let's give him three rolls to see if he makes it to the bottom. He does have a torch. So. That one, that one, that one. Oh. <laughs> You guys can see the torch hopping all the way down, goes under you at some point, goes around. And yes, uh, he calls up the main chute, uh, gives two tugs on the rope. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of water here, but it's not very deep. Uh, and I, I, I think there's a door. Hey, hey, hang on. Uh, you guys hear this unbelievable screech as metal, rusty metal, uh, on rusty metal. And then you hear, ka-slam! And you don't feel anything on the rope. <laughs> Whoa, Okay. All right, so either he made it or something got him. Azari, Dave, give me uh, investigation checks, please, while you're trying to drag these freaking bovine away. Uh, minus 17. Two, 14. Uh, Dave, you don't notice it because it looks like standard foliage. Uh, Azari, you notice uh, across this grassy plain there's a lot of foliage, but it seems to be contained in a rectangle kind of thing. Hmm. Uh, because the sun has already dipped down, there is no reflection, but there's something weird across that field. Hmm. Dave, we're going to stop right now and 
butcher these creatures, take as much as we can and leave quickly. There's something across the field and I don't think we'll be able to drag them fast enough to get away. It would better spend the next 20, 30 minutes butchering as much as we can and watching these creatures, keeping an eye out. Uh, Peck Peck arrives a couple minutes later and goes, what the hell are these things? Beat. He will help you butcher. Do you alert him of the strange going ons across the field? Yes. I'd like Peck Peck aware of this as well. Uh, Peck Peck's concerned, rightfully so. Uh, so he is going to be severely distracted. Peck Peck. And Peck Peck swears he saw something move. Peck Peck, if it gets within 30 feet of us, point it out and I'll take care of it. You worry about getting the food back. Okay. Uh, you guys uh, take the time to butcher it. Which one of you two wants to give me a percentage roll or shall we fuck you over and have Dave roll it? <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's okay. This, this is how much meat you take back. How much meat we take back? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 50. 5 zero. Uh, you can feed uh, 50 and 50 uh, from the uh, two cows and, of course, an extra from the uh, giant peacock. Nice. That's worth it. Uh, Peck, 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 Peck is certain that there's something moving around over there. All right, Peck Peck, you take it back. You start moving back with the food. Uh, oh, Dave there's no come. way. There, there's no way he'll be able to take it all back. Not all of it. Take as much as you can, and we'll take the rest and cover you. All right. Uh, he <laughs> beelines out. Uh, Rakir Ingve. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Start pulling back the rope. <laughs> uh, rope ain't coming. Oh, okay. Is there still a light there? Nope. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two options here. <laughs> Either we could go down and investigate what happened. That's your only option. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Or, or secure the door. <laughs> or secure the door. Because, <laughs> you know, you would never, ever see that Grubeck again. Either I'm way. I'm certain of it. <laughs> <laughs> Reoccurring where's, villain, where's, boys where's, and girls. Where's, where's Peck Peck? Peck Peck is with Azari and Dave. And that's where I think he is. Okay, well, time for... <clears throat> time for... Someone to be brave here. <laughs> Dave, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when did the others get back? <laughs> now, I, I don't have any dark vision. I don't have anything. I'll I'll go halfway down, okay? If I'll ask Inve to, to produce another torch, and I'll go halfway down and see if I can see anything. Okay. Give me one uh, acrobatics roll. Okay, I what reach into my pack, pull another okay. torch, produce flame, and that hand one. it to Ingve. That one. I mean, oh, hang no, it to no, no, no. here. This is uh, acrobatic. I have a plus five on that, so that's going to be a dirty 22. I rolled the 17 plus five. Uh, you use the handrails out of uh, supreme caution, and you notice the moisture uh, has started to rust through the metal, but it gives an abrasive quality to it, so you don't have any problems whatsoever. Uh, you get down about 18 feet, looking around. Uh, the rope is still there. The, the rope just, you know, has gone into the center and gone down somewhere into the darkness. Uh, do you want to continue? Well, I, 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 I have a torch. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, if, and yeah, I'll go down another 10 feet to see if I can, I'm trying to find the end of the rope. One That's more roll. The end, one more roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. Slipping into darkness. At that time, my acrobatics check was a nine. You're still fine. Uh, uh, you you kind of slip, but you're okay. Uh, you move down another, and you can kind of see the bottom. Uh, the undulating water is moving around. The drip, drip, drip noise is still coming from somewhere. You aren't sure where. Uh, but you notice a small alcove 
down near the bottom. Okay. And does the rope go into the alcove? It does. And I'm pulling on the rope and, and it's pulled. I can pull it. Nope. Nope. Not moving at all. It, you can just, you can hand over hand and that rope is not going to move. It's just taut, right? Mm -hmm. It's just tight. Yep. Something is holding it there. Okay. Um, I am going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to find out how deep the water is. About one foot. So I'm on what type of surface am I on at the bottom? Stone, can I tell it's stone? stone? It, it's, 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 it's stone. It'll be stone. All right. This is not a place we can obviously sleep because it's full of water. Right. Okay. Okay. We're here to find shelter, correct? Yes. Okay. I am dumb, but I am not so dumb. I'm going back up. The rope itself is about three feet uh, off the ground. It goes into the alcove, and with your torch, you can see a large metal door, and the rope has kind of been wedged in. Oh. Dave, Azari, uh, you going to head over to the <laughs> strange disturbance, or what do you want to do? You, you've covered Peck Peck's escape. He's going to haul a good 20 pounds of meat in. And, you know, for all you know, he's telling everybody, I've been killing these things. I don't know where the other two went. Fuck those guys. I am your provider. <laughs> do we leave it? Up to you best we leave it if it follows us that will be an issue Let's you guys it. have not seen shit yeah uh yeah we'll just we'll it could just be peck peck's paranoid too so yeah let's get out of here with the rest of our meat sure you guys head on back uh a good five ten minutes in you hear a loud screech coming from back where you were single screech avian maybe possibly uh, killer hawk, something like that. Uh, you catch oh, up. That's as, a lot of guts back there. Uh, maybe scavengers. Yeah, mm. As Peck Peck comes back to meet you, uh, he'll go ahead and take a couple handfuls off each of you and go. Uh, they've already started a fire. They're getting everybody fed. Uh, yeah. The Grubeck's missing now. Hmm. So are least, we. <laughs> have they secured? Has the others? Do you know if the others have secured lodging yet, Peck Peck? They're out in the open. Shit. Uh, okay, I'll go check the. Uh, I'll go check Let's the hustle. first. We'll hustle back and go check that. Check the buildings. Huh. Make sure, see where they're at. Or somebody knows where they went. Roll a d6. No, nah, they didn't tell anybody. Okay. Oh. Azari or Dave, d6. Azari, go for it. I got a two. Uh, you find this long rectangular building covered in ivy. Uh -huh. uh, as you approach it, there's a rusted metal door with no handle on it uh you can tell that there's those opaque openings mm -hmm. uh that are kind of blocked up near the top uh, if one of you crawls onto the other shoulders you'll be able to see into it okay uh does the doorway does it look like it hinges in or hinges back out to us you really can't tell you also notice that there are a lot of unusual scrapings uh of recent uh around the edges Looks like it's been made by a small dagger type instrument. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Repeatedly. Yeah. Shake uh, weighty. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Do you know of any way to open doors that does not require an axe you need or it down? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're talking to Dave, I assume. Yes, Dave. I mean find something big and hit the door with it. You are big, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David, you'd you like your ankles, you're big. friend. <laughs> well, Dave, would you like to see if we can batter down this door? Maybe we should look around more. 
you aren't that smart. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice, but sometimes the uh, simplest path is the easiest path. We'll give it one shot. Oh, you we'll speak Dave language. So we're just going to kind of take a couple steps back and we'll both battering around the door, try and bash it in. With what? <laughs> just shoulders? full force shoulder. Shoulder, Me. Yeah. shoulder check that shit. Okay. Yeah, they're awful we're big. Gonna, we're going to hockey check the door. <laughs> uh, both of you roll a straight up D20. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> nice. Ouch. Dave's Somebody's gonna get it hurt. <laughs> uh, that is a Dave's 15. head hits door. Oh, a what? Fifteen. Uh, roll That's initiative a, between twenty-four. Two. Roll initiative. Okay. Oh, because yeah. if Dave if Dave wins it, that nineteen. It's a seven, twelve, nineteen, two. Ah, uh, you both hit the door at the same time. Azari, you're gonna take some damage. You're going to take five hit points of bludgeoning damage, uh, and Dave just careens through the door. Uh, shards nice. of metal go in different directions. Uh, you hear a ba-doing! Uh, <laughs> and then ah. you you all, well, Ingve, Azari, Dave, Peck Peck, and the rest of the universe will hear wah, 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 wah. Oh, cool. Wah, wah. What? Very oh, loud. <laughs> that's oh my, yeah. This is, oh what my year God. are what we in again? Noise. That's <laughs> fun. Oh my God. Um. Inside okay. there are metal box looking things. Huh. I'll look around, try and see if we can find the noise. Like, is it just? Omnipresent, or is it? Does it seem to be emanating from a certain space? Oh, it'll be emanating from a certain space. Give me investigation checks because it's very loud and very distracting. Yeah. Oh, that's not horrible. Uh, Fourteen. Same. Oh my God. Fourteen. Uh, odd or even? Odd. Dave, uh, you see where the noise is emanating. Uh, Azari, you notice that the fractured door. Uh, has like threads or wires coming out of it and there's a plate of metal with red hash marks and there's just these strange copper looking wires coming out of it dave just above the door is a circular object with a like a cone in the middle of it and that is where the distracting noise is coming from can i smash it with a club <laughs> Uh, you can try. Uh, 14 plus... The 20th century. <laughs> 14 plus 6. Yep, you hit it. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, I guess I, I, guess I do uh, 10 points of damage to it. Sure. Uh, Rakir, you are still... Uh, Ingve, you're still on a landing and you're like, what kind of fucking creature is that? Azari, you're looking at the, this thing and you have no idea what it is. Dave's like, that killed. It is a, killed it. it. Is safe. <laughs> That's experience on fifth level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Startled Kill by it. the noise. I'm like, rush here, <laughs> get up here. <laughs> Dave, it seems Rock, to rock here. Uh, Ingve wants you to come up there. We have a puzzle. Dead now. Here. We have a puzzle. And my Dead. that some bitch has my pen knife. <laughs> I, I'm gonna walk up to the door <laughs> and it should still be propped open let me, because because the because the rope's in there, right? No, but there's a handle. You can tell that the rope has flattened out, so essentially it is wedged into the door, hence no movement. I, I don't think I, you need I, an insight. I'm going, to, I'm going to try to open up the door. Sure. <laughs> the rope falls into the water with a splash. Inside, you see a, a rather significant bonfire uh, coming from a, a metal circle. Uh, the shadow of the Grubeck kind of leaning over 
looks back at you. What is this place? Um, We're in the year 2000. Um, the year 2000. <laughs> this is the reveal. You guys are not in the Stone Age or Bronze Age. You guys have survived a calamity. <laughs> We are. <laughs> oh man! And, We're gonna, and, are we going to see a giant statue of Liberty somewhere? <laughs> you might, damn dirty apes! Might run into eight people. But oh yes, man! You, you guys released the uh, emergency exit. <laughs> that was the horn. That's so, that's why oh, that God. red bar was there. Oh yeah! Oh, um, <laughs> I, I'm say. I don't know. Do, do I do I see an exit out of this room with the bond? Uh, I mean, literally a bonfire as in there's wood burning. Not wood. Uh, big plumes of black smoke are going. It appears as though some kind of oil or sludge is within this metal container uh, with the light flickering all over the place. Him holding the torch, you holding the torch. You notice that you were on another long metal grate, uh, and below you uh, is about three feet of water, maybe 10 feet down, but large cylindrical metal looking things are spaced evenly apart as far as your illumination will go. Uh, and there are a series of metal squares on one wall and then just a stone decline on the other wow um and i'm saying i i don't is there any way is the door wedged open <laughs> yeah it's open and it said well you've you've done your job let's uh we've may have found a place where we can at least find shelter for the night because the water is below us now and we could technically sleep on the grate. Yeah. Technically. Okay. Yeah. And it, it extends a good, I don't know, more than a hundred feet. How's the ventilation down. in the place? I mean, are we just going to be breathing billows and plumes yeah, of is smoke? There, I'm going to look up and is there an exit for where this, the, the, the oil is going to go? Is there ventilation up? Not that you can see. Is there a draft of air? Is there? Is it hot? Uh, there is no draft of air here. Okay. Currently. Man, that's freaky. Yeah, you've never seen anything like this. This is super freaky. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, look, give me the pin knife. I, I'll go over that pin knife. I'll help, I'll help walk you out. And I will uh, offer to help walk him out. You'll notice that he has cut the rope, and he's he's still got he's still got the rope lashed to his waist. But when the door shut, he cut it so that he could continue to look around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. That makes sense. I know. Dave, Dave and Azari, uh, you have killed the magical horn. See, I used to do yeah, that shit to Carol all the time. I used to piss her off. Uh, <laughs> you've got these. You've got two rows of these metal boxy type things uh there's crushed stone uh intermittent uh you know weeds around some of the weeds have grown up around these boxes uh along the walls there's a variety of strange looking metal objects uh very rusted very old uh you, you've never seen anything like this. You don't know what it is. Is there a way to open the boxes? Yes, actually, each box has four handles on it, two handles on either side. Dave wants to open one. Inside, it's like a small home. Uh, there are seats uh, at right angles, uh, and there is a shelving unit in the front and a shelving unit in the back. Uh, there are strange flat ropes on either side of these seats. Uh, they're like really tiny homes though. 
uh, you surmise that if either one of you get into any of the seats, you would fit comfortably. So there are many of these boxes. Uh, there are six and six. 12 of them. They are all the same thing, though. Uh, they are all. And they're all. Two tone colors. Two-tone. Are they all connected to the wall? Right? No. No, no the, the, the walls, there's a three foot gap uh, on against the wall, in between the two rows, and against the wall. So that okay. you, could, you could walk and you could open this door, which also has the opaque windows on it mm-hmm. uh, around it. Uh, but you can open one of the doors and, and not hit an obstruction. Okay. Mm. So we have several spots for people to stay and sleep. Now, there are strange sigils on each one of these two-tone boxes. You cannot... You don't know what it is. Huh. Dave just wants to check them to make sure there's nothing in them you know, yeah. dangerous. Sure. Uh, some of the items, some of these boxes have different things in them as well as different aromas. Uh, most of them are stale though, but uh, you can check all 12 boxes and there, there's nothing here. Several of your tribe mates have come to see what the noise was thinking it was a dragon. Um, but is there a door at the other end of this building? Yeah, there is. It has a latch on it, too. I want to open that as well. Uh, you grab a hold of the latch and you pull in and you push out, uh, but it doesn't move at all. Just above uh, the handle is what looks like one of Rakir's coins, only it's more silverish than anything. And it has a fracture in it. Is, the, mm-hmm. is there one of those things that makes noise above the door? There is not at this one. Then I will just try and shoulder smash my way through the door. Dave, wait. What? <laughs> Too late. Roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be uh, 14, uh, 14, 14 to one plus, <laughs> I guess, whatever strength. Four would be like an 18. Uh, your shoulder really hurts and you put a big dent in it, but you did not open it from this way. And then you hear Azari yell no. Dave, wait. There is merit in keeping that door locked as there would only be one entrance and only one defense. If we need it as an out, we can burst our way through, but it would be better to have the one, the singular entrance where people can come and go. Dave, break door later. Okay. Perfect. Um, we'll tell the people that they can start using this as a, there's these, since we've already pulled down most of the things that, that people can sit and sleep standing up, people can lay on the floor. Just sure. make yourselves comfortable in the area as best uh, you can. Ingve, you see two torches appear at the bottom of the shaft, and uh, it's clear that Rakir is actually helping uh, the no, 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 no. Frank, read uh-huh. my message. Uh oh. <laughs> and I find its way finds its, it's way just, into his it, ennui. It, it's only one torch. One, one, person, one, one torch and Rakir is walking up. Nice. Rakir's a psychopath. <laughs> you ought to read this. Ingve, <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Oh boy, I'm gonna. Hopefully, I can perceive the hell out of this. Oh, seventeen <laughs> plus. Uh, yeah. You wish you could. Be there. Plus a, six. Seventeen a, plus six. So twenty-three. There's a weird smell coming up. It's like Rakir farted or something. It's okay. Kind of putrid sewers-ish from Adventure Sense. Ah, see, there plug. Nice plug there, right there. <laughs> yeah. Boom. <laughs> uh, and Rakir. Hop, skips, and jumps up the stairs. Sounds like somebody's. And I, uh, I, I just, I just bring up the rope and show it's cut, and said, "He, he must have got away." Yeah, probably. <laughs> you okay. guys are gonna fucking sleep with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. Uh... 
There's one other building. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Uh, and I heard this well, this loud fucking noise. Oh. Sound like a dragon. Sure Ooh, it sounded dragon. like no dragon. creature I've heard. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim, one of the two. It had to be yeah. one of those two. <laughs> what? Uh, 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 bonus life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yes, you have another building to investigate. Uh, the noise, and you will also notice people are moving towards that first building. Okay, mm. I say, look, there's a crowd forming at the other building that we we checked. So I, I say we go out, we join them, and see what's going on. Uh, as you guys get over there, uh, you will find Dave, Azari, Peck Peck, The Meat, uh, Cool Feathers, Rock here, uh, and those those metal boxes that Ingve noticed. Uh, they seem quite spacious. They're covered in runes. Are they? Are they, is there an upholstery? <laughs> do the do the walls feel like the biblical seat, sense? The, the seats are upholstered. Okay, all right. Well, will, without leatherish, I will quickly communicate to Ingve on our walk over there, and I, I'm in a great mood. And <laughs> fuck, I know what that means. <laughs> so. Whenever we got down, whenever we got down there, the uh, um, the rope was cut. I I came into a room. It looked to be about 60 feet long with all sorts of weird shit. And there was a big fire, a big fire going on in the middle of the room. And it, it, the, the smoke was just disappearing. It wasn't wood. It was like oil was on fire or grease was on fire. I, I, we got to tell the others what we've yeah, seen. Yeah, we, we need so. to tell that. It would be safe to stay there, but I don't know where the smoke is going. It could get... Yeah, quite, quite, quite poisonous. Yeah, and I don't know. Coming and, out, and no. I don't know where the uh, I don't know where the Grubeck went. No idea. No uh, idea, huh? No idea. Okay. Deception roll, Rakir. <laughs> oh, I, I don't have good on this one. He's a lousy liar too. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm not <laughs> pretty insightful to what this means. It's just like, okay, In -In -Bay, you probably noticed that he's still fidgeting with his pen knife. Mm -hmm. I'm just <laughs> like, that the grew back <laughs> I'm like, okay. He must buddy. have left it behind when he cut the rope. That's it. Yeah. yeah. He left yeah. the knife yeah. behind. That's it. <laughs> and so uh, uh, you guys can now. Uh, deliver your findings to Dave and Azari and vice versa. Uh, Dave and Azari, they're some kind of possible fucking avian life where you killed the giant horned bison things. Mm -hmm. uh, Rakir has discovered some kind of strange room that could be fortified, has no idea what it is. None of you guys know what you're in right now. Dave killed the dragon. Uh, everybody is... Uh, kind of crowding in. You can fit about five, maybe even six people uh, into each one of these small homes. Okay. Uh, and there was four small homes? Or six. Six, 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 six. Six. Twelve all together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a decent amount of people. Let's oh, yeah, plenty of, plenty of room for all of you. Yeah. And only, one, building. and only one entrance has been breached. Let's check oh. the third building before we move on with our lives. Sure. Okay. Uh, same thing, covered in ivy. Uh, this one is an L shape. Uh, there is a door in the L right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears to be locked as well. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> Dave, if you'd uh, care to do the honors with me. Okay. okay. That's what Rocky here is just walking along going. Mm, mm, mm. He's happy, man. He is thrilled to no end. Oh, yeah. Uh, Azari and Dave, strength check and then uh, initiative. See who hits it first, just in case it goes bad. Uh, 19. Oh, and yeah. uh, I rolled a nine for the initiative roll. Uh, 19 for strength. 
Oh, I'm uh, 14 for if I count my strength modifier, it's 22. Uh, and strength. a and a nine, uh, oh, seven plus four, sorry, 14 for initiative. You're both pretty close to hitting it at the same time, and you knock it off its hinges, flattening out. You prone out, uh, and you find yourself in what you believe to be uh, kind of like a miner's workshop is uh, the closest thing you could uh, tell. Okay. There, there are a lot of tools here, a lot of uh, strange pieces of metal uh, wide open. There's another two of those box things, but they are suspended uh, on metal trees. Hmm. Interesting. And there's, I mean, there's some signs of weeds in here, uh, but the floor itself is uh, almost perfectly level and it's slate. Uh, where is... the metal trees are at, uh, there is uh, more grates uh, that go in a horizontal fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, but you really can't tell what kind of tree this is. It's odd to see so much. This is, these were metal like the tips of my arrows and swords to use no, so these, much. These are, these are really sturdy metal. Well, that's the closest approximation Azari would have to it. Like, this You can make like a billion fucking arrowheads out of yeah. the metal here. We could make weapons unfounded with this much metal. Let's search the rest of the building. Could make an even bigger axe. Everybody roll a straight up yeah. D20. Oh, 12. 12. 12. Uh, 4. Rock here. Second. <laughs> nice. You you were just kind of hanging back, making sure that there's nobody here. Uh, Dave and Ingve, each one of you finds a smaller metal tree, about five feet tall, uh, with a tapered end. Uh, on it, on, on, on the peak of this tree, there's no root system, but on the top of the tree, there's like a, a cone, a conical shape on top of it. And inside, you see a small brass lever, you think? Uh, Azari, you were astonished at the amount of metal in here and are, are impressed. Clearly, uh, the leader of the tribe had the elevated uh, homes, but there's yeah. no rope ladder or any way that you can get in there. Yeah. But is... Rock here, as you're kind of guarding the back, you see a series of six levers. So six levers? Levers. So we will start with Dave and Ingve uh, with these small conical things uh, with the brass lever. Conical things with a brass lever. I don't know. Um. It's up to you, Dave. Ooh, Dave in charge. And and Azari, even with your people's vast amount of knowledge, okay. you have no clue what this is. Yeah. So Dave's gonna push. Dave, well, I've seen gotta, a lever before. You, you gotta wanna, push. push you wanna push on button? the left, or do you wanna push on the right? Because it it kind of makes a T. Uh, you push, and it doesn't move. Push a little harder. Not moving. Dave? Uh, maybe we should not press any levers or push any levers. What if any of this actually falls back on our people in the other building? Yeah. Uh, what if it what if there's some connection? I don't know what, but it could be that by pressing levers, the other it Ingrid, did, Ingrid. we burst through the door, it set alarms. If we start pressing more levers, it could I don't know. Yeah. Do worse. Set fire to a room for all we know. Right. 
Uh, really? We've done our job. What about we just secure this room and we go back and we just shelter it, for the no. night? And we... that, that would be so. Good. So Dave, uh, Dave's in favor of eating. Okay, right. Rock here. Uh, Ingve and Dave and Azari have decided probably not a good idea to be pushing on those levers on those metal trees. You have six levers. They are all, or I'm sorry, one, one, three, five, and six are in an up position. Two and four are in a down position. I already know where this is going. <laughs> one, three, five, and seven. One, three, five, and six, six. are up. Two and four are down. Well, that seems odd. <laughs> okay. No, I'm 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 not gonna be the asshole here. I, I really don't know what's going on. Um, really? Oh really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? I'm, really? I'm puzzled. Are, are there any are there any other Grubex left? Uh, there are zero Grubex no. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you killed the last one. <laughs> I did not kill him. I he escaped. He he this right into the coil. Fire. He escaped this mortal coil. Exactly. Absolutely. It's another phrase of killing them. So it's... so so now there's seven and one, three, five, and and six. There's six of them. Two of them are down, four of them are up. Wow. And these are on metal trees. The homes are. Two of the homes are on metal trees. Mm. I'm having a hard time actually visualizing this, to be yeah. honest. I, I, I really am. I, I'm homes on top of trees. This is what I'm this is what I'm having a hard time. Oh, that part. Uh yeah, there it's a it's a metal tree, cylindrical, very smooth, no bark. Uh it goes up and atop of this metal tree instead of a leaf canopy. There are more of those black squares. Okay, number seven. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. There's only six. Only six. Two and four are down position. One, three, five, and six are in the up position. Well, number two and four need, need to go up with the rest of them. Okay, fair enough. So, do you do it at the same time? Yes, exact same time. I knew it. Dave, Ingve, and Azari roll acrobatics checks as the trees are sundering and sinking into the ground. <laughs> God. Uh, 16. 15. Uh, 21. 21. <laughs> Azari? 15. Uh, Azari, uh, you leap, barely escaping as the uh, two toned rectangle comes uh, careening down, but actually it's just kind of... Uh, uh, but since it's, since it's something out of the ordinary, you guys all leap out of the way and the two homes of clearly the leaders uh, rest on the ground. You look over and Rockier's like... <laughs> like the dog out of the like Nintendo Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Rock here. Please don't touch me again. Or, your ass. <laughs> or I will place your head underneath it and then press the then press the button down. Do it. Do it. <laughs> so now that no, these no, homes I are said, down, I, what's I in these think homes? I know how this works. Up is up, down is down. No, that's not how up it works. Up is down, down is down. Down, down is what? Please stop figuring it out. <laughs> Okay. Now this home is <laughs> Got it. Gotcha. Gotcha, okay. boss. Gotcha. No so problem. So on these homes, there's doors. Yeah, same, same as the others. Is it? Is it all the same? Is it what? Is it? Oh, is it all the same? Like uh, just more chairs yeah. and okay. In hmm. one of them, however, uh, there is a small mahogany box. And the one that notices it first is number four, Azari. I'll 
grabs so, the box. So as the home nearly, nearly killed you at the rate of about one mile an hour, uh, you notice inside there's a mahogany box. Huh. I will pick up the mahogany box and see is there any writing or anything on it? There is, but you okay. cannot tell what it says. You also notice two hook locks on it. Okay. Um, I'll unhook the locks and see a, if it opens. A pungent aroma emits from the box, and there are four cylindrical brown leafy like items. Nice. Four cylindrical brown leafy like items. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost turd shaped, I would say, but come on, no, on big star, have a cigar. Yeah, go far. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, I'll close the box and just pocket the box in my cat in my pack for now. And okay, do you reattach the latches? Yeah, or? yeah, I'll relatch it. What does Cuba mean? Oh. Yeah. yeah, so them cigars will be okay. For yeah. A while. Uh, yeah, the, there's uh, two. Now, Rakir, give me an investigation check. Okay. But do they pass the Glinton test? 11 on investigation. Now, that's just a straight 11. My uh, intelligence is <laughs> from 9 to 10, so I don't have a negative, so it's a 10. So you notice when the two trees retracted, they you cannot look under there. They are not under the black homes or the two-tone homes. Okay. Well, I, 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 I'm really kind of at a puzzle, and and as Zuri said, stop, stop messing with things. So I'm gonna stop messing with things. I'm gonna say, look, I, I, I just saw something. I, it looked out of whack. It looked like it wasn't like the rest of them, but no problem, man. I, I'm, I'm just, I, I, I'd like something to eat, and that's it. I'm gonna go away now. Let's go eat. <coughs> set watches. Yeah, we have a safe place to stay. Yeah. So, yeah. Azari's gonna also Presumably sit down and start. Uh, he's gonna see if he can try and read from this the Great Calamity book. Uh, most of the words are not going to be in your repertoire. Uh, the writing itself is kind of flashy. Uh, it's yeah. a cool size font. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but there are pictures which is a big help. Uh, and you'll notice you don't really know what it is, uh, but it's like rectangular trees mm -hmm. uh, made of gray stone placed near to each other uh, in an immense growth. Uh, it's a city image. Yeah. Uh, you see people dressed in strange clothing uh, meandering around uh, concrete slab or uh, flat stone slabs, uh, and you see a picture of these metal homes placed randomly uh, throughout this image. Hmm. Uh. Interesting. Yeah, really. Hmm. Be my trailers? No, just kidding. <laughs> Say calamity metal homes. Huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got you guys will eat. Everybody go ahead and do uh constitution checks. It's not poisonous, it's just to see how you like them. Uh, proficient in constitution checks. Uh twelve plus six is uh eighteen. Uh eleven. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fourteen. Uh, it's a little bit better than okay. Rock here, how'd you like the meat? And ten. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, everybody is grateful uh, to Azari and Dave for uh, bringing the meat. Uh, some of the women have taken to uh, plucking the feathers uh, of the eyes uh, because they are so enchanting and mm -hmm. wear them in their hair. Some of them have several, uh, making them look like Native Americans now. Uh, but I, there, there's quite a few feathers they're very elongated uh but you know it's, it's kind of cool mm. there is yeah. no beer there is no wine 
No, no there, there is. There is nobody, nobody found water except for rock here. We don't even know if that's that's probably not even potable water. So not sure. Uh, so we don't the, know if we understand the concept of potable. Yeah, some of the people while they were waiting for you went down to the river uh, and found a van filled with water. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, they, I mean we they, do have a river. Yeah, yeah. and, and they, there's enough uh, strange containers lying around uh, that most of you probably will not get tetanus. But yes, there is some water. Uh, okay. Doesn't taste very good because it's from the river. Tastes mm -hmm. like Peck Peck's ass from when he fell in. Mm. Uh, how do you want to do watches? Because Azari and Dave know something's out there. Ingve doesn't know of anything out there. And Rakir <sighs> knows that that damn Grubeck's out here somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> he got away. Damn you, Grubeck. Dave uh, will take first watch. Okay. Zari's going to uh, stay up all night. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my point of exhaustion, but he's going to stay up all night and read, try and see what he can read out of the religious tome and the great calamity. So he's going to sure. spend his whole, even though he's everybody's, he'll take his watch, but he's going to spend his whole evening doing that. So he'll, okay. he'll, he'll take the exhaustion for the day. Your sister has not recovered yet. She is still catatonic. Uh, He's also hoping that book might give him some insight. You on want me to shake picture. her again? No, Dave. It would be best if <laughs> you were to let her okay. rest. It may be a side effect of the creature possessing Maybe her. Maybe there's something in this book that'll help. How about you read the book and <laughs> you can let me know if you think there's something and okay. then I will okay. tell you to just, not. Just trying to be part of the team. I'm After just eleven, gonna go take watch. Spinal, <laughs> spinal tap. Ah, Here we go. There we go. Hey, the, 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 those those strange threads hanging out of that bar thing looks like they're wrapped around the spine. That's the answer. <laughs> uh, who's taking second watch? Or Azari, you taking? I'll second take watch? second watch. Yeah. Third watch is. Anybody? I'll take third. Okay, so uh, D6. First watch, uh, Dave, you hear that same avian type noise. Okay. Ingbe's going to have assistance with his. He's going to summon an owl and perch it on the, the corner of the building. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> goes on beyond <laughs> hearing the noise. Be <laughs> yeah. But he's going to use that kind of as... Um, now, are, are you three guarding the open door, or are you outside, or how are you I'd doing? Be out, I'd be, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'd be outside the open door, near the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Ingve is the same. He's got the owl perched on top of the building. So. Now, keep in mind... Uh, if you're going to read Azari, you're going to need a light. So that will He'd go ahead and probably stay by the open fire where they cook the meat. Oh, so he oh, kind of just keeps it, keeps it kind of just enough to read. Sure. Okay. But not heavy. I, I'll, I'll be right back. Frank's friends are out front. Why are the cops at your place? <laughs> uh, other than the avian life uh, that Dave hears, there is no other disturbance uh, throughout the evening. Um, so you guys are good there. Uh, so uh, morning dawns anew. Azari, the uh, book on uh, Cognitus, the religious book. Mm. Your role was pitiful last time so there's there's just no comprehension there yeah. it, it babbles on about doing good and all that bullshit maybe something Rakir could uh, read uh, d12 against me uh, for your civilization book okay or your civics book okay oh, can't three equal see. and separate ten branches of government uh this reoccurring theme of the tall square trees, mm -hmm. uh, you're starting to notice similarities. Uh, the opaque openings uh, appear with great frequency 
inside here. Uh, you notice in the drawings or the illustrations that uh, people would just go in to these metal homes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as the illustrations continue, you would notice that the same person owns the same home, but brings in different family members. So you don't know if it's adultery or they're living separate lives or something of that nature. Yeah. Um, there's also images that you do not understand. It looks like uh, a, a butchering inside uh, and everything is cut symmetrical. So you, there, there's a lot of stuff in this book that you don't understand uh, as you start to flip through, you know, passing over the shit you don't understand. You notice that this rectangular forest uh, at one point is on fire. Uh, hmm. Some of the rectangles are gone. Uh, some of the homes have been overturned. Uh, there appears to be a great fissure in the ground in some places. And you aren't really sure, but the difference between the start of the book and the end of the book is easily discernible as strange yeah. and different. Okay. So, um, yes. uh, give me a D20 there, Rock here. Wonder how bad my audio was since I had the mic on the other side. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's been fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is tremendous. What did Rock here roll? D20 and a one. Uh, oh. Dawn breaks anew. Azari. Jesus <sighs> Christ. Uh, uh, thing. Uh, there's dew on most everything. Uh, the ground glistens. Uh, birds have reappeared. Small birds, finches, uh, sparrows, things of that nature. They flitter about. Uh, they don't get anywhere near uh, Ingve's owl since he was the last one in. Uh, but they flitter around. Uh, you also notice uh, smaller creatures, chipmunks, squirrels, rabbits, uh, filtering in and around. Everybody else is still in this long rectangular building. Uh, yeah. You four are awake at this point in time. Uh, it's a new day. Uh, this book is quite interesting. There was tales of large, it seems large, it's large rectangle that reached up high and somewhere there and people seem to live in them or bring other people into them. Right, and then like these, but bigger. Yes, much bigger. Uh, and then some were on fire and some were destroyed and the, oh. the very ground seemed to swallow up things like fissures in the earth. Wow. Was they think books are bad. Were there like armies? Like armed I, I did things not, or anything? Not or? seeing armies. It seemed like almost like it was the sky was on fire in some points and then the buildings or these homes, these giant rectangle homes were on fire. Except the rectangles were not like the one we have that's flat it was standing up huh. I, this this is this this is all obviously from some other i don't know some other world it would feel yes or age some yeah. some it, I, if it was another age, it was a much... What kind of sorcery is yeah. this? <laughs> so, I mean... If it was another age, it was a much more... Much something stronger. older than all of us. Older than, you know, our elders back at the village. I mean... Not older. More Gizba, powerful. Gizba might know. Yeah. More powerful. Not older. Definite, uh, definitively more powerful. 
they have metal to make thousands of arrows to make swords of various types and size in there. Big, big and axes. Need, and axes and shields and things of that nature. And they made trees. It, it makes the me rise wonder. and fall. The power is enormous. <laughs> <laughs> we need to... We will need to. We will need to get our things, get our people, and leave. Yeah, we need to consult our elders and find. The world out. is this, this part is of the, not what we know. This place is safer, or at least much better than it was, as animals seem to have returned, unlike before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. we should leave. Yeah, we should make our way. Let's check on our people, see if they're still there. Oh yeah. Okay. They're, they're, they're sleeping. Some of them are a little bit. Uh, we'll start. Uh, <coughs> I'll start making my way through, like kind of. Except for your sister. Yeah, she's still unconscious. <laughs> she's still weirdly. At least we out. have other people that weirdly help comatose. us carry her. So. Yeah, we'll start waking people up to get out of here. Uh, yeah. You guys collected enough meat that there's still a little bit left over. Uh, you guys can take it along the way if you'd like. Uh, how did you want to proceed off this island? Um, let's take, I guess we'll take people, um, we'll take as many people as we can on the boat and just kind of cross back and forth as many as, many as we can each time. Real quick, uh, Rock here, give me an insight check. Uh-oh. <laughs> so that's a dirty 22. Oh. Hang on. Damn. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why do I have the feeling this is going to get bad? This one is negative. Because it's Rakir's rolls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Rakir's silent rolls in the background? Uh-huh. His his messages have been like true crime drama for God's sake. I imagine they were. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh my god. <clears throat> so, uh, oh. <laughs> so, what, so Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey show up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you guys, you guys have opted to leave. You can go to the uh, front pinnacle where Rakira has already taken parts of two boats and turned them into one boat. Uh, <coughs> Hang on just a second. Sorry for the delay, messing things up. That's okay. No, I, I, I it, we don't have any. With, without telling you exactly what it is, it's hard to describe. All of this will. I, unfold. I don't know how people do this. All right. So I, 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 I will inform the other you know someone else that look it's possible that this water that that we saw whenever we went down and i saw that terrible place and the you know grubeck escaped that (laughs) through no fault of my own (laughs) that could be like an underwater tunnel there's flowing water there and there may be a way to actually travel you know under the earth and using this using this tunnel it seems to be going in the direction of back to ba uh-huh. from what i can tell so I, I, I mean, i'm not saying that that's the way it is I'm just saying that there's a possibility. Do you know how long may be able is? to use this underground water tunnel to escape this area? Do you know how, how long saying? the tunnel is? How far it is? Is it a short minute or is it miles? Are you willing to sacrifice the lives of these people to make sure it all goes? Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, <laughs> I am. I said one by one. 
No. Um, <laughs> Perfect. You'll be the first. <laughs> that sounded a bit bad. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just saying there may be an alternate route. That's all. It, Have I, you investigated the alternate route? Checked it? No. no I, I, Gone through all the I had a chance to see is that this is what I think there may be. From, from where I was at last night and where we were looking around, there seems to be a pathway. I Where were don't you? know how far that pathway goes. It, it would require further investigation, but it may be safe from predators. It may be safe from from uh, from marauders, bandits. So, also, keep in mind that the river is very fast because the falls are right there. Yeah. So an unknown underwater current takes you to an unknown, possibly safe area for an unknown amount of time where the best of us, Dave, could probably hold his breath for five minutes. And if it's any longer than a minute, you'd probably kill everyone in this group outside of maybe a dozen of us. That's including us. Well, the area he was at was not underwater. Yeah, I, oh. it's, it's like an underground river. Well, am, I, am I right with that, what I was describing? Okay, no, because you made it sound like it was like an underwater <laughs> river that we'd be jumping into the water and being underwater for... That's what I yeah, thought was going on. Okay. So, so the, his description through his eyes was you have to descend into a deep pit where there is about a foot of water through, through an opening oh. across a, a, an overhang over some unusual cylindrical looking objects but the raised portion uh where there was fire uh is dry totally dry well, it, this why i'm having a hard time describing it because i don't have the words to describe this i don't know what this is so we're not going to be drowning no 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 we're, we're, oh. we're raised up then i completely misunderstood then. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm care. having a hard time. I, I could say two words and he would understand exactly what it is, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Lead the way, Ricky. If we were to uh, undertake this journey, let's go. We have to take all the people and we have to go now. There's not a. We shouldn't. Ricky and I can take and point. Ingve and I will cover the back. Cover the well, back. it's also the direction that the Grubek went. So if he's. If he escaped and he's out trying him. to find his friends, this is the direction we need to go to make sure he doesn't escape. Then I'm pretty sure we'd be fine taking one severely injured Grubeck who would not have gotten far as he has a leg contusion and he can probably barely move or walk properly. I'm sure if he's gotten somewhere, we'll probably find his body floating along the way. You might. You might. <laughs> And with I that, that, Azari's suspicions are completely confirmed, and he's ready to go check it out now. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. He, he making curse. He we're we're like, going yeah. underground. Folks, we're, this has been the Calamity Campaign. We're going to kill Saturday an night. entire group of people. <laughs> yeah. That's, we are. that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, Jesse, what do you think? That was good. This is... Uh, I, I did not... I feel we are not necessarily in a Bronze Age as we might be in post-apocalypse. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's exciting. That's this interesting. Is, that's, is, that's, a, that's a heck of a now, twist. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't ready for post-apocalypse uh, if that's where this is going. This is awesome. Or some, I, type, I, some type of. I, I told uh, you there'd be a big surprise. <laughs> yeah, there's a, the, that's the, I was not prepared for that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting to hear kind of this uh things kind of like it sounded like a like things we take for granted or kind of know just by visually seeing and by hearing it in a different way yeah it's throwing me completely but it's good really good i'm loving it david yeah. what'd you think i'm thinking i got more percentage rolls coming up <laughs> 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 yes you do uh scott what'd you think I just, I finally was able to get someone away from Ingve. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Rob, what'd you think? 
Dave killed a dragon. <laughs> Great. Yeah, he did. That's right. Killed a dragon. Dave killed a dragon. Oh, wow. Uh, and folks, a cow, been, whatever that is. A longhorn steer. <laughs> uh, folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc., the Calamity Edition. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. We hope you liked it as much as we did. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to shoot shit about D&D. Uh, go ahead and join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like this Murder Hobo t-shirt or these t- these t-shirts, uh, check out our shop. Big thanks to Odd, or Pirate Dog Dice for custom dice that I didn't really have to use this time because, I mean, if you can't kill a peacock and a cow, you really shouldn't be fourth level. Uh, and again, if you want putrid sewers uh, to smell where these guys are headed, check out Adventure Sense <laughs> by OddFishGames.com. They also probably make- need a new one called Burning Flesh. Just uh, mm. yeah, uh, bur- burning sludge fa- uh, flesh. Uh, Rancid apocalypse. They uh, they also have the shine system to make you write much more gooder than me. And don't forget Maddoth Productions because they are sponsoring us in MurderHoboCon.com next Sunday, a week from against tomorrow. Against the Giants. Against Sign the Giants is the there. Giant. Uh, five bucks gets you in the venue. There's a couple of bands. There's a comedian. Uh, there's a lot of weird shit in there. And you can play in any game that you want. We ask that you get tickets. Uh, those are free. But get tickets so that the DMs know how to prepare appropriately. Ticket sales are going to end next Thursday night. Or badges, badge sales are going to end Thursday night. So you only got a couple more days to get the badges. Then we got to close it because I have a shitload of background work to do with our venue. Uh, so check that out, murderhobocon.com. Signups are at Tabletop. There's a link to all of that stuff. If you have any questions, get them in soon. Tomorrow we got the Margu campaign. Next Saturday, uh maybe a one shot so if you're interested in playing in a one shot m hobo inc twitter or gmail hit us up we will try and get you on it just depends on how much of the uh con crap i get out of the way I- i'm pretty well ahead of schedule but eh, we'll see folks for all of us here at murder hobo inc thanks for joining us tune in tomorrow for the margu campaign they left their zonkies behind big dating name kissing wave Mwah! bye everybody